Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the sixth meeting of the Justice Committee in 2016. Um, turning to item one on the agenda, our members, this is taking um, business in private, are our members content to take agenda items six and seven in private? This is consideration of the report on the Veterinary Powers LCM and our programme of work. And we are agreed. all agreed. agreed. Thank you. <laughs> right, item number two, and again, it's my pleasure, second week in a row, <laughs> to uh, welcome Annabel Ewing, Minister for Community Safety and Legal Affairs, and her official to the meeting to speak to the affirmative SSI on the Draft Legal Aid Scotland Act 1986 Amendment Regulations 2016. And with the Minister this morning is Denise Swanson, Head of the Access to Justice Unit, and Alistair Smith from the Directorate of Legal Services at the Scottish Government. So, just remind members, this is an affirmative instrument and officials are permitted to give evidence under this item, but not to participate in the formal debate at the end of item, uh, agenda item three. Can I refer members to paper one, which is a note um, by the clerk, and ask the, the minister to make a, a short opening statement. Uh, well, good morning and thank you, convener. Uh, I, I, I'm very pleased to be here today uh, to uh, move the uh, regulations, the Legal Aid Scotland Act 1986 Amendment Regulations 2016. Um, these regulations make provision for legal aid to be available in the new Upper uh, Tribunal for Scotland, which we uh, discussed last week. Uh, the regulations will enable legal aid to be available when the first of the jurisdictions, uh, jurisdictions covering housing matters transfers to the Scottish Tribunals on the 1st of December 2016. Uh, as the two housing jurisdictions that are transferring in to the Scottish Tribunals currently have legal aid available to them in an appeal to the Sheriff Court, a commitment was made to lay these regulations to allow the status quo to continue and to ensure, therefore, that access to justice uh, could be delivered. Thank okay. you. Are there any questions from members? Oliver. Thank you, convener. I understand the Law Society of Scotland welcomed the proposals, but they'd raised the question over what fees would be available for the work. Um, is there a plan to bring forward regulation in relation to the fees, and when do you expect that to happen? Uh, well, I, I thank the member for his question. In fact, the, the regulation for the, the fees to be applicable, and we're now the 4th of October, and we're hoping that this will be in place so that legal aid will be available come the 1st of December. Uh, to maintain the status quo, uh, so the, the fees will be the existing fees, and I believe that there's a negative instrument on this morning's agenda on, on those uh, fees. Fair to the, the, the negative agenda, and maybe some information that came in yesterday, Minister, it was a business and regulator impact uh, assessment, and I understand there was a draft, and the draft was changed, and it was under the second parry, the legal aid provision, current legal aid provision makes civil legal aid available for appeals. Now, previously, it had been appeals and judicial review um, from a tribunal. Would you like to clarify just exactly? What yes, I, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to do that, uh, uh, convener. Um, th there will be, a, a, in due course, legal aid available for judicial reviews when the judicial review uh, mechanism transfers to the upper tribunal. Uh, at the moment, the, the Lord President had, had felt that we should let the, the upper tribunal, the new tribunal structure, bed in before the judicial review function was moved from, in the first instance, the Court of Session to the new tribunal structure. And that is why we have not brought forward the legal aid provision to cover that uh, transfer in due course today. But obviously, that will be brought forward to do that when the judicial review structure transfers from the Court of Session to the upper tribunal. Right, so it wasn't um, a, a case of it not being a formal preceding judicial review? It wasn't anything to do with the terminology? or My understanding is, is that it was simply to allow the new structure to bed in and maintain the judicial review mechanism in the court of session uh, in the first instance as we have at present. Right. Uh, and that was my understanding, unless officials wish to... Flag up anything? No, no. The judicial review won't be dealt with in the upper tribunal at the moment, so there's no need to make legal aid available for that process. Legal aid is available for appeal, uh, for judicial review that will be dealt with in the court of session. When that process transfers to the upper tribunal, the legal aid provisions will be made uh, at that time. Okay, so I suppose the bottom line is there is no um, change in the legal aid 
provision. For judicial review at this time, that's correct. Really. Yeah. Okay. Are there any other questions from members? If not, um, then, Minister, do you want to uh, make a closing statement? No, thank you. Uh, if not, then we'll move straight to the, the debate, which is the formal considering of the consideration of the motion in relation to the, um, the affirmative instrument. Uh, right, the motion is that motion S. 5M01596 that the Justice Committee recommends that the Legal Aid Scotland Act 1986 Amendment Regulations 2016 be approved. Minister, can you move the motion? Moved. Thank you. Uh, invite in, oh, sorry. <laughs> Any members want to say anything? No, we're quite happy with that. Okay. Um, so I put the, the question that uh, we are agreed the motion 01596 in the name of Annabel Ewing be approved. Are we all agreed? Yes. Thank you. Well, that concludes consideration of the affirmative instruments. Uh, the committee report will note and confirm the outcome of this debate. In the meantime, can I invite committee to agree to delegate authority to myself as convener to clear the final draft of the report? Agreed. Yeah, please content with that. Thank you. It remains for me to thank the minister and officials for attending and call for a brief suspension. The fourth item of business today is consideration of two negative SSIs, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Framework Order 2016 SSI, 2016 Oblique 249, and Civil Legal Aid Scotland Miscellaneous Amendments Regulations 2016 SSI, 2016 Oblique 257. Can I refer members to paper two and ask if you have any comments? Okay. No comments, then um, the committee has agreed that it does not wish to make any recommendations in relation to these instruments. Is that correct? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. Item number five on the agenda today is consideration of two instruments which are not subject to any parliamentary procedure. They are the Act of Sedent Simple Procedure 2016 SSI 2016 Oblique 200, Act of Sedent um, Lay Representation for Non Natural Persons 2016 SSI 2016 Oblique 243. And again, can I refer members to Paper 3? We don't normally take no procedure instruments, but the clerks paper explains why it was thought these should be placed on the agenda and usually that's for one or two reasons, either there's been drafting issues or there's been a kind of change of policy that we think is worth noting. Um, so could I have any comments on these two SSIs? Which one is riddled with the drafting errors? Is it that one? They both have. Yeah. I think if we look at our papers, then I think the first thing comes to mind is that they are, in fact, riddled with fairly um, careless sometimes and then moving to more substantial drafting errors. In, in one case, it actually potentially changes the meaning or causes confusion. So I think we'd most certainly want to draw attention to that and have that on record. Stuart Stevenson? Um, I welcome the fact that uh, one of the errors will be fixed uh, to have no effect uh, on, on the operation. However, a number of errors, uh, it appears on the briefing we have before us, will remain to be fixed at a later date. And I think uh, my interest in this is always uh, that we try and extract a date that that means, rather than it simply being open-ended. Um, not that I'm in any sense doubting the Lord President's private office is uh, willingness to make the changes, mm -hmm. but I think it would be helpful focus to them if they think about and give us a date. I don't suggest when <coughs> that date is. That is for them. 
Okay, can we note that and perhaps we can write a letter just asking that. I mean, this was a, an issue that um, came up fairly regularly in, in the last session, as, as John will know, and uh, I thought it important to continue these. We don't expect them to come too often to committee, but I do think it's important to um, make comment, and uh, the, these were particularly bad examples, I have to say. So I think we're sending out a very clear message that we're at best disappointed uh, with um, just what's been put in front of us and would hope that this wasn't something that was going to continue. Okay, if there's no other comments on uh, these instruments, we now move into private session. <laughs>